What's up, guys? How are you? Welcome back to another video. Today's video, the topic is, you're not always going to feel like it. You're not always going to feel like it. You know what I mean? Going to the gym, you're not always going to feel like it. Eating healthy, you're not always going to feel like it. Hammering away on your business plan for your new business. You're not always going to feel like working on that. You're not always going to feel like posting content. You're not always going to feel like hanging out with your family. You're not always going to feel like going out. You're not always going to feel like staying at home. Sometimes you're just not going to feel like it. You know what I mean? So this specifically came up because it pertains to your vision. So you just got off of a long week of work. You have a busy weekend. You have a bunch of family plans. You're going to go out with some friends, etc., etc. Your life is busy, but you committed to do this thing. You're not always going to feel like it. Or again, I always like to use fitness because it's relevant uh, from just part of who I am in my former career in personal training and health and fitness. You want to get in shape, you want to have the body of your dreams, but every day after work, you had a long day at work, you're not always going to feel like going into the gym and working out. You know what I mean? Been there before? So whatever it is that you're working on, the vision that you have for your life, the things that you want to achieve and do and have, the person you want to be, you're not always going to feel like being that person, doing those things. And if you don't feel like being that person who does those things it needs to do, you're never gonna have what you want. So what do we do when we feel like we don't feel like it? What do we do when we're feeling like I don't feel like it? What do we do? So this is where commitment comes in. What is commitment exactly? Commitment is just that. This is my own definition of commitment. I'm kind of making it up on the fly, but commitment is a singular focus and unwavering attitude towards what needs to be done to achieve the final result, regardless of thoughts, feelings, and emotions. I can't even repeat that. I don't know. That's just what came out of me. So I'll have to watch the video again to just get my own definition of it. But that's what resonates. It's basically have an unwavering direction and I wouldn't even say desire or ability, but it's having an unwavering commitment, an unwavering, unperturbed, undisturbed ability to focus on a singular vision and the willingness to complete whatever needs to be done in the midst of outside circumstances. That's another way I'll put it. That's commitment. In other words, no matter how you feel, you're going to get this done or get these things done because this is what you committed to and this is what's going to take regardless of how you feel, especially when you don't feel like it. Because that's really where the breakthrough moment comes. That's where a moment in personal growth and breakthrough comes. When you get done what you need to get done, especially when you don't feel like doing it. When you are getting in shape and you have a goal, especially when you don't feel like going to the gym, that's commitment right there. That time that you don't feel like going, that is commitment when you still choose to go because it is that indeed just a choice. One of the uh, the courses I did, this in, uh, emotional intelligence kind of personal development thing I did up in LA, they used to have a, a saying in like the leadership program of it. And the commitment is F your feelings, what are you committed to? So you make you set these lofty goals and you have all this stuff that gets in your way and you have your own beliefs and all these limitations that start come, start to come up and we used to always say f your feelings what are you committed to okay yeah you're scared to go and do that f your feelings what are you committed to you said you were committed to doing this vision like no shoot what is going to get in the way of that nothing because you're so committed it's so strong that f your feelings who cares how you feel get it going get it done you don't feel like it of course you don't this is you coming up against yourself that's you coming up against your ego saying, your ego saying, nope, we're not doing that because that requires you to be a different person and grow and then have the things that you want to have as a result of growing and doing that. We're not doing that because when you do that, guess what happens? I die. Part of me dies as your ego and we're not doing that. That's you coming up against yourself when you don't feel like it. When you start talking yourself out of what it is you need to do in order to achieve this 
greater vision for your life in whatever area. So what are you committed to? That's what we used to always say. Well, what are you committed to? Because we're always committed to something. So those times you don't want to go to the gym and you choose not to, well, you were committed to something. You just weren't committed to getting in shape. You were committed to chilling out. You were committed to that show on Netflix you wanted to watch. That's what you're committed to. There's nothing wrong with that either, but you're never going to get to where you want to go unless you develop a strong relationship with commitment and overcoming those limiting beliefs, the patterns, the habits. F your feelings. What are you committed to? Now, part of what I want to address that I addressed after I did this leadership program and stuff is I don't want you to disregard how you feel your emotions and invalidate yourself. So what I wrote of is this, F your feelings. What are you committed to? Now we talked about commitment and making sure you're doing these things when you don't feel like it. But what I don't want you to do is this don't dishonor or invalidate yourself by disregarding your emotions and your feelings. And so this is a weird thing, right? You're saying, well, what do you mean, Pierce? I need to honor my feelings, I don't feel like going. But then you're saying, I gotta say F my feelings and focus on what I'm committed to. Well, that's confusing. So here's the distinction between these two and how we delineate and discern between the two. You need to honor your feelings and your emotions. You need to check in with yourself and say, okay, I'm feeling these emotions. I'm feeling these things. Uh, What is this part of me that's speaking though? Is this my ego or is this my higher self? Is this my heart? Now, this is gonna be very individual and situational for each one of you guys watching this, for you watching this. Each situation It's going to require you to use your own discernment and self-awareness, higher perspective of yourself to be brutally honest about yourself. Okay, I don't want to go to the gym. Is this me like brutally honest with myself? Is this me being lazy and making up excuses? Or do I seriously like physically I'm burnt out and what would serve me best is to actually chill out today? And that's why I don't want to go. Because there is that fine line. So let's take both sides of the same coin. If this is you being lazy and you can be brutally honest with yourself and you just had a hard day at work and you're just like, "Ah, I'm just tired, I just don't wanna do it. Be brutally honest with yourself. Get your ass in the gym, go. No questions asked, don't think about it anymore. The longer you think about it, the more you're gonna talk yourself out of it. Now, if this is you, okay, I'm like overloading, I'm on you know, the verge of a nervous breakdown. I'm on like four hours of sleep because I'm working on this project at work and like today was the worst day and I got in an argument with the coworker and you know, my boyfriend or girlfriend, I'm dealing with this and and you're like, dude, I'm so burnt out. Like what actually would best serve me is to go home and just chill and watch Netflix tonight. And so yes, you're not working towards your fitness goal, but again, this is circumstantial and very individual. So you will have to discern, discern, what that is for you on each day in each situation. That's really what it is. And this is where self-awareness, the ability to be grounded and centered in your being comes into play. And we'll talk about practices about how to develop more of that, or we have been, and we will continue to do that on this channel. And I'll make videos dedicated to that specifically. So you really got to decide, you know, do you need to pause? Do you need to rest? Or is this my ego? coming up against me? Is this me coming up against myself? And this is a wall I need to break down, you know, or in that situation where you are burnt out and you're on not that much sleep and stuff, maybe what would be, and you're so keyed up and in this like fight or flight state, maybe the best thing for you to do would be to go and work out and burn off some of this negative nervous energy. And sure, you're going to be exhausted, you know, physically afterwards, but you're already emotionally and mentally exhausted. But maybe that would be the best thing for you. And then you know, it would allow you to go into this nice restful sleep. Again, discernment is the key here, but you're not going to always feel like doing the thing. So if all you've set aside is three hours a week to work on this business plan or this project, your side hustle, whatever you want to do is you transition out of your main job because you realize you're awake and you can no longer work for a company or people in a toxic environment, et cetera, et cetera and you've worked all week and you only have a little bit of family time and that family time and work time 
that's your main focus and motivation and you're taking care of your body and you're like, dude, I'm exhausted, but, and you set aside only three hours on the weekend, an hour and a half each day in the morning to get it done in spite of being exhausted, that is your commitment bro, sis, that's your commitment. You said you wanted to start the small business. You are damn serious about it. Every And the reason why is because every week you go to work, you're so burnt out. You hate what you do and you're trying to make a change. Even though you're tired, you got to make that happen, sis. You got to spend that hour and a half on the weekend or whatever time you set aside for yourself. You're not going to feel like it. But what are you committed to? You got to get it done. This is your challenge this is you overcoming yourself this is you building the character you need in order to break the cycle that you've been in and you can do it no one said it was going to be easy but it is worth it and you know that even though you don't want to hear it sometimes you may shut up god turn this video off i hate hearing this guy he triggers me because he's in my ego you know i know he's right because he because what it is guys is that i'm not here to be right I'm just speaking truth that you already know. So, but your ego doesn't like to hear it because it wants to stay the same. Because it's not me being right. I'm just talking to myself here. We know this stuff is just simple truth. We all do it, man. Well, I'm the same as you. I'm no different. Like, we all go through the same stuff all the time. So, this is also a good point to bring up why it's important to choose to do things that you truly love and bring you joy because in those moments where you don't feel like it the joy the connecting with the greater vision of what this is bringing to your life what this particular activity relationship event connection etc etc is doing to build your vision well that's where the saying comes it's a labor of love and it won't feel like work and the resistance to doing whatever you need to do, whatever that goal is, it'll be so low because you'll be so connected to such a powerful vision of something that is truly resonating with your heart and your soul. So you've got to choose what you love. You've got to do what brings you joy. And then the resistance will be a lot less. So if there is a lot of resistance built up, that may be a time to kind of take a step back and saying, okay, is this part of my vision? Is this really what I want to be doing? Health and fitness, yes, because that's universal. Some pursuits will require you to break through an old habit or establish a new one initially. But when you're over the initial hump, it becomes a flow and it becomes easier every time. There's much less resistance. So if you're someone who's a writer, you write books or you're a musician or you're an artist, you have a creativity block. This is when you need to push through even when you quote unquote don't feel like it or again maybe you do need to rest and that's what will open up the floodgates to your creativity you get to discern but uh i referred to this gentleman a while back ago i need to start reading his stuff again too and resubscribe james clear he's a behavioral psychologist he wrote a book called atomic habits although i haven't read his book i followed him for a long time and i've read a lot of his material and i shared the four burners theory he also, but another thing that he wrote, I definitely need to resubscribe to him today. James Clear, he's a behavioral psychologist. I recommend you follow him. If you resonate with my content, chances are you'll really like his stuff too. So James Clear wrote about the creativity block and what he found through a more empirical scientific study, because I just kind of riff off the cuff about things that I've heard, my own experiences and lessons. And yes, they are valid and if i wanted to take the empirical analytical approach i would spend more time doing research and bring up pop-ups of studies and stuff and the exact numbers of everything i'm not you know <laughs> like I, this stuff is i i'm just referring to it anyways that's not really my style though i could maybe i should i don't know so uh but anyways he talks about empirical psychological studies of people that are creatives right and when they've had blocks and what he found was creativity yes it's an act of inspiration when you may have this burst of energy and feel divinely inspired to do something or some you know activity whatever it is but what he found was with creativity if you don't feel like writing the best thing to do is write if you don't feel like making music the best thing you need to do is make music if you don't feel like painting you should paint because what he found is creativity is comes naturally with the act of consistency regardless of how you feel so as long as you keep doing the thing you will overcome those blocks naturally and all of a sudden you'll produce a master or work 
just from the experience of doing. So that's one approach. You may need to rest. If you are already in the flow and you really are burnt out, you may need to rest. Again, discern individual unique situation. But a lot of the time, you just got to go. You just got to do it. You just got to do it. One thing to bring up in mind as well is making sure that you're dropping the perfectionism within you because that is, and I'm going to make a whole video when the time is right, just on perfectionism alone and how that is such a killer because most people don't even get started in their lives on what they want to get started on because they have, they suffer from severe perfectionism and everything has to be in its perfect place and the perfect research with the perfect plan at the perfect time of year and the stars have to align and Jupiter has to be conjuncting with Mercury and it has to be 333 on 1111 on this November and then I'll get started. But my family has to be here first and see what I'm saying? So yes, yeah, you know, it's a little, little, little tease at you and myself. Perfectionism. Drop the perfectionism because there's no such thing as perfect circumstances to get started. You create the perfect circumstances by just getting started and you'll understand then that these blocks are there for you to grow and learn from. So no such thing as, or you gotta drop the perfectionism. So who cares if it's not your best? Who cares if you're not ready? Who cares if you don't feel like it? Who cares? Who cares if your makeup isn't on, if your hair isn't done, if you're not dressed up in nice clothes? That's perfectionism. Hold yourself to a standard of excellence and don't let a bad night's sleep, an unresolved personal issue, another responsibility get in the way of what you truly want. What are you committed to? Commit to it. Get it done. This is developing character, resolve, and discipline. This is molding and shaping you into the man or woman you need to be, that you will be, that you are becoming, that lives that life, that vision that you have for yourself. That's what this is doing. You're developing the traits that become a part of you and transfer to every part of your life. So when you develop the ability to discern and overcome your self-limiting beliefs, your egos, your lack of discipline, your lack of commitment, you are developing your discipline, you are developing your commitment. These are character traits that you embody that will permeate in every area of your life. So if fitness and getting in shape is something you've always gone, uh, struggled with because you've struggled sticking to, I hate to say diet because I think diets are terrible and you should never diet. You should learn proper eating habits and that's the sustainable thing, but that's a separate subject. The way that you're eating these healthy eating habits, these healthy active, uh, behaviors that that fit version of you exhibits. This is you becoming that person. Every time you overcome that, I don't want to go to the gym today. I'm too tired. Every time you go, when you feel like that, that is you becoming the man and woman you want to be who has that fit, healthy body, who has a lot of energy to do all the things and go on these adventures and hikes and hang out with your kids and you're never exhausted and burnt out and overwhelmed because you take care of yourself. You're becoming that person. And every time you overcome that, I don't feel like it. I'm too tired. You're becoming that person. This is you. This is the process of becoming. This is the journey. This is the process. The most important part <clears throat> of all of this, we talked about many times, I refer to it in almost every video, is to have a vision. You've got to start with the end in mind because if you don't have a vision, if you're not starting from the end in mind, well, who cares about commitment? You're not going to commit to anything. You don't even know what the hell you're committing to. So you got to start with having a powerful vision. It's got to be so, oh, you want it so bad as Napoleon Hill refers to in Think and Grow Rich, a burning desire. You've got to have that true burning desire first for the vision that you want for your life or else commitment won't matter because you don't care. It'll be so loose. Anything, you'll get, distract, you'll, you'll get distracted, you'll fall off. You don't care because it's not really strong. There's nothing pulling you forward and keeping you in line and refocusing you when you do fall off your path. So you've got to start with a vision. Once you resonate with the vision so deeply, those bad days, they don't even make you flinch because you're so excited about what you do and where you're going. These trivial little ego challenges of like, oh, I'm too tired, won't matter. Because that vision is so strong, you're gonna easily overcome it because you know what you want and you want it so bad that nothing's gonna get in your way. That's where you gotta start. If this video 
If you like this stuff so far, guys, this is resonating with you, would love it, would be super grateful for you to like, and if you like the channel, you like the video, and you've seen some other stuff, to subscribe. This is what the vibe is about here. It's what we do on the channel to help you develop and clarify a passionate, gotta have it, gonna make it happen vision, and then addressing the blocks that we all face trying to better ourselves and our lives. That's what we do. And then uh, if there's someone who pops into your mind as you watch this, please share it with them. Greatly appreciate it. all that great algorithm stuff. Quotes for today. Oh, what do we usually do? We usually do quotes and then I pull a card and then end it. Okay, so quotes for today. First one's from The Rock, Dwayne Johnson. Success isn't always about greatness. It's about consistency. Consistent hard work leads to success. Greatness will come. So you got to overcome all these little limitations on the way to becoming that better version of yourself. The second one, Vince Lombardi was an old football coach, famous legendary football coach. Was it Giants? Jets? I can't remember. Giants or Jets? Packers. Packers. He was an old Packers coach back in the day. Most people fall or most people fail, not because of lack of desire, but because of lack of commitment. So you've got to have that super strong vision, so strong that you've got no problem committing to it. That way when the roadblocks come and they will come, they're supposed to, you're able to overcome them. Or when you fall off track or get distracted, your vision is so strong, you come right back to it and you get right in line. A to B, baby, that's where we going. Tap three cards, clear the energy of the previous reading. Ask for the purest and most divine truth and my highest good, your highest good, and the highest good of all. Man, I gotta think of like a tagline. I'm sitting here thinking like, what am I actually doing on my channel? It's like personal development, but there's a deeply spiritual, contextual, contextual undertone to what I'm doing here because I'm an extremely spiritual person, but it, putting it in a very practical, day-to-day, -day, black and white, 3D, physical way but it's like, I don't know, some catch line came up and it's like bridging the spiritual and bridging the spiritual and non-spiritual or something. Like, that's what I'm doing here. I don't know. Anyways. What does spirit have to say? Oh, that's the one. Okay. I was like, what does spirit have to say? And the peace card pops out. Peace. Everybody knew peace. <laughs> card number 13, peace. Archangel Azrael. Look at the picture, what resonates for you today in that picture, that is your soul speaking to you. The message of the card, release the past, there's a, a more enriching future coming. Let go and let God. Didn't I just pull this one on like the last video? I shuffled them up. So clearly for me and you both, this is the one. Release the past, there's a more enriching future coming. Again, we're talking about focusing on your vision and committing to it being willing uh, to let go of all the past, all, even the people, the places, the relationships, maybe you need to move. Maybe you're switching jobs. Maybe uh, you're letting go of old friends. Release the past. Maybe you're letting go of old habits. Commitment, move forward. There's a more enriching future coming. Let go and let God, that's what it says. 13, the peace card. End with this today and then we'll go get a little lifty lift in the gym. The Peace card heralds a time of great transformation for you. You're in a period of amazing transformation. That's what we're talking about, what to do when you don't feel like it. You're transforming right now. You're becoming a different person. It's not easy. Your old limitations are gonna come up over and over. You're not gonna feel like it. You're gonna make all these excuses and you're gonna put all this crap in your own way. Don't, let it all go. These are blocks that you're building for yourself. Do not build those blocks, let them go. Focus on what it is you want. Only focus on what it is you want. That's what the law of attraction is. Anytime you entertain anything outside of what it is you want, you're either slowing your manifestation down or attracting what you don't want in. Because that's what you're focusing on. So that's what you're attracting. Focus on what you want. The Peace Card Herald's a great time of transformation for you. It is a period of leaving behind the situations or experiences that no longer serve you or people in relationships also. And, I should say, you've outgrown this phase of your life and you're ready to move forward. This, the time has come for new adventures and that will enrich your purpose and allow you to evolve like a caterpillar transforming into a butterfly. Often when this card is drawn, the time of change was expected. 
It may come with a sense of great relief or perhaps feelings of sadness, which are natural too. And you need to process those because when you lose something, even if it is something you didn't want, you're still losing something. You need to grieve. So there's a sense of sadness possibly. Archangel Azrael opens his arms to you with love and compassion and will help you during this period of transition. Take time to experience any emotions you have with grace and self-love. So again, don't dishonor what you're feeling. Don't dishonor your emotions. Just become aware of them and understand, be able to understand and identify these emotions, process them, honor them, and do not let them stop you from doing what you need to do. That's the best of both worlds. That's loving yourself right there. Take time to experience any emotions you have with grace and self-love. Additional meanings of the card. Embrace the new dawn. Release the past. Let go and let God. Gotta let it go, guys. Let go of the stuff from the past. We're done with that. We ain't going there. We're going forward. You're on to your best life now. That's why you're here and you're aligned with it. That's why my video came to you. Because that's what I'm doing. That's the vibration that I live. So that's what's coming out. That's why you're attracted to it. That's where you're going to. Don't let anybody or anything stop you from that. Starting to build a nice little community here with you guys. It's going to be more and more powerful as more and more of us join. And I create some resources and some spaces for us to really connect together too. For all of you wonderful, amazing, beautiful souls shifting or that have shifted to 5D consciousness. We are rising together, my friends. Love you so much. That's what I got for you today and I'll see you soon. Peace.